OK, now you re probably remember how you add fractions like this. Write it with a common denominator. 2 gets multiplied by x plus 2. Uh, 3 gets multiplied by x minus 1. So we get 5x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2. This work is about going the other way. It's about starting with something like this. How do we then split it into partial fractions? It's particularly useful when we want to integrate expressions like this. So what we're looking at is how we take a fraction like this and split it into parts, into partial fractions. So let's do this example. We know what the answer is because we've just seen it, but let's assume that we don't know what the answer is, but we know that we can split it into something over x minus 1 and something over x plus 2. And this is not going to be an equation, it's going to be an equivalence because it's going to be true whatever value of x. So what we can now do is multiply it through the whole of this equivalence by x minus 1x plus 2. So if you multiply the left hand side by x minus 1x plus 2, we're just going to get 5x plus 1. Then we're going to do the first bit by x minus 1x plus 2. And the second bit by x minus 1x plus 2. To squeeze that in. And then obviously the x minus 1's cancel and the x plus 2's cancel. So we end up with 5x plus 1 is equivalent to a lots of x plus 2 plus b lots of x minus 1. Now after a bit you should be able to go straight from this line to this line. But be careful, make sure you understand which bits are cancelling. Now this is an equivalence and it's true whatever value of x. So uh, when x equals 1 I get 6 is equivalent to uh, 1 plus 2, that's 3, 3a. And then 1 minus 1 is naught. That's why I chose x equals 1. By choosing x equals 1, the b bit equals naught. So from here, I can see that a equals 2. So what's going to make the um, a bit equal to naught? Minus 2 is... So let's choose x equals minus 2. So minus 2 times 5 is minus 10, plus 1 is minus 9. So minus 9 is equivalent to, that bit's naught. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. So it's minus 3b, which means b equals 3. So therefore I'm going to get 5x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2 equals 2 over x minus 1. Uh, plus 3 over x plus 2. And that's the answer here. Now there's two more types of partial fractions to consider, so we're going to go on to those on the next slides. So the second type to look at is where we've got something that looks like this. This time we've got a repeated linear factor. And I'm going to show you why we need a new technique, because the tempting thing is to say well, it's A over that bit and B over that bit. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to multiply it through by the denominator on the left-hand side. So the x, I'm going to multiply through by x plus 1 squared, 2x plus 1. x plus 1 squared cancels with x plus 1 squared when I multiply through. So I get A times 2x plus 1. And then the 2x plus 1 cancels with that 2x plus 1, so I'm going to get x plus 1 squared. So let's now make the b bit here uh, equal to 0 by taking x is minus 1. So when x is minus 1, I get uh, 11 times minus 1 squared, that's 11, minus 14, plus 5, uh, put minus 1 in here, that's minus 2, plus 1, that's minus 1. And then the b bit is 0. So 11 take away 14 is minus 3, minus 3 plus 5 is 2, so minus a is uh, 2, so a equals minus 2. Now let's make uh, 
this bit here equal to naught by taking x is minus a half. So x is minus a half. So minus a half squared is a quarter, so it's 11 quarters. Uh, minus 14 halves plus 5. Uh, minus a half plus 1. So this bit, whole, this whole bit here is zero because two times minus a half is minus one. Plus one is naught. Minus a half plus one is a half. Half squared is a quarter. So it's eleven quarters minus fourteen halves plus five, uh, which is three quarters. So therefore, you get three quarters is b over four. In other words, b is three. So it all looks okay. So we've got 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1 equals a over x plus 1 squared uh, plus 3 over 2x plus 1. So this has got to be true for every single value of x. So I can check this by taking x equals naught. If I take x equals naught, the left hand let's just write it down, x equals naught. The left hand side is five over one. The right hand side is minus two plus three, which is one. So therefore five equals one. So it just doesn't work. It doesn't work because the x plus 1 squared, if you were to add these, we'd have an x plus 1 squared here. We've got 2x plus 1, and we're adding them. We're not going to get the right uh, numerator. So when we have a repeated linear factor, which is what this is, it's squared, so it's repeated. It's linear because it's just got an x inside it. A repeated linear factor, this method doesn't work. So here we've got the same question, and we need a new term, an extra term, which... Uh, is those terms here. So this was what we had before. We need the x plus 1 there. It's x plus 1 because it was x plus 1 squared. We've got the x plus 1 squared, so the factor that is repeated has to have a bit by itself. So we do the same thing as before. We multiply through by x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1, and we get this. So you need to be careful at this point. I've multiplied through by x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1. That's x plus 1 squared. It's cancelled with one of those to leave x plus 1 and they've still got the 2x plus 1. I've multiplied through by x plus 1 squared, so that is cancelled with that, just to leave 2x plus 1. And then uh, I've multiplied through by this again, so the 2x plus 1 is cancelled with the 2x plus 1 to leave that. So now I can do the same thing as before. Let's take x is minus 1. So I get 11 minus 14 plus 5 is no a, uh, Put minus 1 in here, minus 2 plus 1, that's minus 1. And then put minus 1 in there, that's 0. So therefore b uh, is 2. That's not right, is it? It's minus b that's 2, so b equals minus 2. Uh, I can now do x is minus a half, as we did before. So it's 11 quarters. Uh, minus 14 over 2, that's 7, plus 5. Put minus a half in there, that's 0. Minus a half in there, that's 0. Minus a half in there, that's uh, half. Half squared is quarter, so it's quarter C. So that means C, uh, as before, C equals 3. Now there's a slight problem, because we've got this identity here, and we've put in minus a half, we've uh, put minus a half there, we've put in minus one there. There's nothing else that's obvious to put in. And you can put in any value you like. You could put in 100 and you'd get uh, an answer, that's fine. But the sensible thing is to put in naught, because naught is the easiest one to work out. But the equivalence bit here means that it's true for any value. So if I put in x equals naught, then I get 5 is... 1 times 1, that's 1, so that's 1a. One, uh, 1 times b. And then it's 1 times c. But I know what 
uh, b is, I know what c is. So 5 equals a minus 2 plus 3. So therefore a equals 4. So we need to try and write out the answer at the end, rather than just leave it all in this gobbledygook. So it's uh, 4 over x plus 1 uh, minus 2 over x plus 1 squared uh, plus 3 over 2x plus 1. Don't squash your work in like I'm doing. I'm just trying to do it here so you've got a, a record of it all on one slide. Uh, but do make sure that you write out the answer at the end. Don't just leave it all uh, in here. One more example to go. That's on the next slide. Here's the question. It looks very similar to the first type. It's going to be a, it's equivalent by the way, a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2. Multiply through, we get 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 is a lots of x minus 2 plus b lots of x minus 1. Put in x equals 2, I'll get 12 minus 6 minus 2, that's 4, is b. Put in x equals 1. Um, going to get 3 minus 3 minus 2, so minus 2 is minus a. So therefore I get 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 over x minus 1, x minus 2. It's equivalent to a and b. Now again this should work for any value of x. Let's try x equals naught. So the left hand side is minus 2 over 2, that's minus 1. The right hand side is uh, 2 over minus 1 plus 4 over minus 2 which is minus 4, so minus 1 equals minus 4. Minus 1 doesn't equal minus 4 so there's something going wrong here. What's going wrong? is this assumption that you can do this. Thinking about this, if you if you started off with uh, this and you were to multiply that by that and that by that, if you multiply, you wouldn't get any x squareds. So this can't work. So what we need to do is to uh, find an alternative solution or an alternative strategy. That's on the next slide. So here's the same question. Uh, we need to multiply out that bottom the denominator, so it's x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now notice here that the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So this is a bit like a top-heavy fraction. When the degree of the numerator is equal to or bigger than the degree of the denominator, you need to do a division and get a remainder. So let's do the division x oops here we go x squared minus 3x plus 2 into 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 x squared into 3x squared that's 3 3 multiplied by all of this that's 3x squared minus 9x plus 6 now find out the uh, remainder that's 6x minus 8 so all of this can be written as 3 plus 6x minus 8 over x squared minus 3x plus 2, which is x minus 1x minus 2. So now we put this bit into partial fractions. So the thing is to work with that, but remember that the whole thing has got this 3 at the start. So this is what we're working with. It's going to be a over x minus 1. It's going to be b over x minus 2. It's going to be equivalent. Multiply through by the denominator. So 6x minus 8 is oops, a x minus 2. It's the world's worst a. Uh, b x minus 1. So this is true for any value of x. If x equals 2, 12 minus 8 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. So therefore b equals 4. It also works when x equals 1. 6 minus 8, that's minus 2. Minus, uh, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So A equals 2. 
So therefore the full answer is 3 because we had a 3 and then it's a over x minus 1 and it's b over x minus 2. So there's three types of partial fractions and I'll just do a recap on the next page. Here are the three types of partial fractions. This you can write as a over x plus 1 and b over x minus 3. So that's a simple type. This bit is a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 1 squared plus c over x minus 2. And for this one you divide first and then go back. It's normally one of these, but it could conceivably be one of these. So that's partial fractions. Nice easy topic.